Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. I cannot tell you how excited I am because look what finally came in the mail five days late. Um, but hey, props to Mr. Hop from MrHop.com. Uh, Koon, Sid, all you guys. Thank you so much for sending me a new advent calendar. Um, unfortunately, post NL, motherfuckers. Uh, left it on the driveway and it got stolen the original one but mr hub was a very quick reactionist and sent me a new one um yeah i would say let's dive right in now for all you dutch speaking folks uh, if you go over to Jol's uh, beer reviews i'll put a link up here um he will have reviewed the same beers i did uh, but four days or five days earlier now I am gonna stick to my schedule instead of doing uh, yeah, 1 to 24. I'll just do this uh, from today till 24 days after today. That actually means that I have, instead of doing the BBP and the Mr. Hub one every day, um, I actually have beers for right up until New Year's Eve almost. I'll probably be one or two days short, but of course I always have some nice beers for New Year's Eve as well. Anywho, um, yeah, I can't wait to start on this, so let's dive right in. Now, Mr. Hop's uh, advent calendar is slightly different, and I'll probably don't get everything uh, in frame, but it is called the uh, Adventure Await. You're like, at advent adventure and it's called the beer bible um so i am expecting a nativity scene <laughs> also it is a book matched box now one thing that i already see is that um, the numbering is a bit easier <laughs> than the brussels beer project one so let's just hope that the system is a bit better as well. Now I'm gonna put it like this because otherwise we probably won't see half of it. Um, but I do see that this one, one, two, three, four, five. And then it goes this way and then back that way. So it's, yeah, resembles sn snakes and ladders a bit, but not really. Number one, front and center. Okay, it's a can. Um, no surprise there because it's 24 cans this is a can box uh, now I've tried my best not to look at the announcements and other reviews so I'm jumping in this open-mindedly um, but oh my god I just fell in love with this can um, this is actually a blank white slate uh, a blank white label with just a banana and the name underneath, the Banana Marshmallow Madness um, from Zuidkraft. And funny detail is that the banana is already uh, also signed. Now this immediately screams Andy Warhol to me. Um, and of course we do have uh, that, that one artist that a few years back uh, just duct taped the banana to the wall as a piece of art. Anywho, um, but this label yeah, it just screams Warhol, and I really love Warhol. Okay, curious about the story behind this fluffy limited edition, scan the QR code. Uh, I'll do that later on. But we do have ingredients, water, malted barley, uh, wheat, oats, bananas, hop, vanilla, and yeast. Okay. Uh, when I see Marshmallow Madness, I would have expected something like uh, added maltose and dextrose, for example. But they did add vanilla and, well, banana, obviously. And it has an 8% ABV. Now, I do see a tiny detail in the corner here that says Special Range 2023. Um, and it is a limited edition, so, yeah. Hmm. Let's not wait any longer. Now, I don't think I have any of the glasses uh, from the breweries that are in this box, but we'll see later on. Uh, however, I always have my trusted tasting glasses. 
Oh, that looks a bit darker than I expected, but. Oh, yeah. That is way darker than expected. Uh, this is not even a discussion whether it's ruby red and the volume makes it dark, because even on the bottom of the glass, I can't really see through. So this is like uh, sugar syrup or, or candied syrup. This is a very, very, very dark, stout, uh, uh, pitch black beer with some yeah, dark beige, almost brown foam. Uh, which is great. Uh, now I already get the aroma of banana in the nose. I even got that while opening the can, so. Oh, that's a lot of banana. Um, although I must admit that this smells like banana extract um, because it has that, that, yeah, how should I say this, that, that added scent. Um, <laughs> This doesn't smell like fresh banana, but like um, banana candy, like the tiny sugared bananas, or banana yogurt. Um, and I don't want to say that anything is wrong with that, because of course, um, while using banana, even fresh banana, in, in brewing, uh, we are actually extracting a lot. If we add the banana during the cooking step, we extract a lot of, um, components into our wort to then get fermented with the beer, uh, with the yeast uh, into a beer. Or if we add, um, let's say, banana afterwards, like we macerate it uh, with banana as if we should make a creek or a framboise, uh, same thing actually happens. We extract the aromas from the banana. So it's not a surprise that this is a bit like an extract. go now the fact that we have a droplet uh, yeah very slowly making its way down here should say something about the beer <laughs> there goes my diet anywho um, yeah that is a lot of banana and this really smells like the the bananas as we say the the, the tiny banana candies um, for that matter, this reminds me of a Lindemann Specheresse, uh, which I've also reviewed last year, I think. Uh, but that also smells like uh, the peach candies instead of the peach, the fruit. Um, but yeah, this, this really smells like the candy or the yogurt. So I am very, very curious. Let's have a taste. Uh, cheers, you guys. Okay, now this might not surprise you, but the very first and dominant taste in this beer, the dominant flavor is, um, how should I say this, banana. I uh, get a lot of banana in there, but it is accompanied by a lot of other um, rather strong and present flavors. So it does balance out eventually. Um, the first thing I got after the banana was uh, a bit of like molasses or syrup. Um, well, the thing we put on pancakes um, and some chocolate. And of course, many stouts have chocolate in the flavor. Uh, but this is a beautiful combination of banana with chocolate, um, which I did not expect. And next to that, we do get a lot of roasty flavors, a bit of coffee. Um, this also reminds me of barbecued banana. Um, and actually, the only thing that I'm missing here is a bit of rum. Some dark rum would be nice, but uh, it is already an eight percenter, I believe. Yeah, so let's not add rum, but I would love to use this as a base for a beer cocktail. Uh, that is actually one of the things I do professionally that is designing beer cocktails. And I would love to make a, um, Pisang like or yeah like this beer with some rum uh, or make it into a daiquiri or something but yeah 
Actually, I should see if I get my hands on a batch of this and then experiment with it. But nonetheless, um, that was after the first sip. <laughs> I seldomly have so much to say after one sip. Also, without adding any dextrose or maltose or, or any of those uh, added sugars, the mouthfeel in this beer is amazing. Um, it is very full, it is very rich, and that does take me back to the name, the Marshmallow Madness, of course, combined with that touch of vanilla. And I'm not a huge fan of vanilla, um, but I like this because it is subtle. This actually reminds me of like um, Coca-Cola vanilla or which was originally um, a cocktail which was uh, based on Coca-Cola and a vanilla bean, a cut open vanilla bean in the glass to stir with, um, which today would be a really expensive cocktail. But however, um, yeah, if you want to try that for yourself, um, get yourself a simple plain ordinary can of guinness um, chill it a bit and then pour it over a scoop of vanilla ice cream and get the decent vanilla ice cream the fresh the the, the, the good one uh, with a lot of cream in it but yeah this reminds me of that uh, beautiful and actually i expected to hate this beer um, because I'm, I love banana, but not necessarily in my beer. I don't really like vanilla. Uh, I'm not into this sweet addition breakfast flubbly whoop stouts. Uh, but this is a very well balanced, very well made, very, very, very nice. also a nice color okay I'm impressed um, and I know this is the first uh, the first video of a Dutch beer advent calendar uh, we as Belgians do make a lot of uh, fun of beer from Holland now let me say once and for all um, we are gonna keep doing that <laughs> But there is absolutely nothing wrong with Dutch beers. Uh, I am a fierce advocate of Dutch beer as long as it's qualitative. And for example, this one, yeah, impressed me a lot. So will I buy this again? Um, no, not for myself. I will be hunting this down for tastings and for experimenting, but I'm not gonna keep a crate of this in the fridge. Uh, I'll just have a lager or something however um yeah how should i score this well it's not my cup of tea but it is a beautifully made beer uh, so i would give this a typical generic three and a half um yeah i'll keep it at that uh, because the scoring is subjective of course nonetheless um yeah job well done and i'm gonna look up Zutkraft after this video. If you guys like this video, um, hit the thumbs up, let me know, uh, leave something in the comments. If you have any questions, uh, same thing, comment section is the place to go. If you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I upload something, which should be every day this month at 6 p.m. And I will see you guys again tomorrow with a brand new brew review and actually two one uh, in this calendar and one from the bbp one now that i finally have them both and i'll probably um, publish the bbp one at 6 pm and this one at 7 pm or something uh, i'll start every day with brussels beer project because i suspect that they have lighter beers uh, and maybe not every day but i'm pretty sure this one has the heavier beers <laughs> so start uh, start light and with a bang what could possibly go wrong? Anywho, two crates of beer in a month. Cheers, you guys. See you again tomorrow.